Hi and welcome everyone. My name is Morten. I'm an engineer here at Anybody Technology um, and I'm your host today. We will talk about the, the new version of Anybody, the Anybody Modeling System version, version 8. Um, I think we are almost ready to get started now. Um, most people are, there's a few people who are just logging in, so we'll give them like a little bit of time, but I think I think we are we are ready. Um, my name is Morten, as I said. I'm an engineer here at Anybody Technology. Uh, my primary responsibilities are managing our models, and um, I also do a lot of development on our modeling system. Um, and I'll tell you everything today about the new version of Anybody, version 8, um, and our new model repository, and also going to show you some of our, our models that are available um, online on GitHub, some future models. and Along the way, I'm also going to tease a little bit some of the development that we are doing here at Anybody Technology. Um, joined with me today here is uh, Christopher, who's our head of sales, and he will be panelist and he will try to um, answer questions along the way. So um, if you have any questions, open the questions um, tab on the sidebar here and, and, and write them. Um, if Christopher can't answer right away, we might save some of the questions uh, at the end of the session. Um, but but anyway, we, we promise to get back to you with your questions. So so uh, so just ask away. Yeah. Normally, what we would do in these kind of webcasts is to present what anybody is. But I think today we're going to skip this. I'm going to assume that most people who are logging in here want to know what is new in the release. So we'll just go right ahead and talk about the, the new release. Um, if you really want to have a deep introduction to what anybody is, I uh, suggest that you reach out to us, um, and I think Christopher will be happy to arrange a one-to-one -one meeting where you can learn more about like what anybody really is. So the new release, Anybody 8, it consists mainly of two parts. The first component is the modeling system itself. It's the way you build the, the models. Um, and, and just today, we also released a version 801, but has some important performance fixes. So so if you already downloaded the Anybody Modeling System version 8, I really encourage you to go in and, and download this small app update. Um, another major part of the release is, um, is the model repository. We call it the Anybody Manage Model Repository, AMR. And this is released in version 3.0. When you download Anybody, you get both of these components together. Besides these th two main components, um, we have also released a number of online resources on our GitHub page. Um, and this is mainly our development version of the model repository that you can find here. Um, the future version of uh, the model repository version 4 is available already now, so you can follow the development. Um, it has some very exciting new models, a new thoracic model and a new abdominal pressure model. And I will get back to those models here at the end of the presentation. But let's start with the Anybody modeling system itself. Um, and I'm gonna go through some things fast and we're gonna spend a little bit more time on some other things. Yeah, first of all, we sort of talk about the interface, new interface features, and then we'll get back to the actual core features. So um, when you open up Anybody, it's not gonna look like this. This is just gonna be a teaser of what we are working on right now. We're working on a completely overhaul of the whole user interface in Anybody. Um, with a new GUI and uh, a new editor with much uh, nicer functionality. Um, but this is just to give you a teaser of that and, and, and to tell you that Anybody 8 ex by itself actually look mostly the same. And this is the reason why. That's because we are, we are working on a completely new uh, user interface. Um, but even though it looks the same, you're still going to find some changes, small changes here and there. There are a few new buttons, um, um, improvements to... Um, to the way you interact with anybody. Um, if you are using the model view, you also notice some changes probably. You can, for example, try to hold control or shift when you double click objects in the model view, that would automatically zoom and center on the different objects. So only minor changes to the graphical user interface of anybody in version eight. But the AnyScript language has changed a little bit. One of the th new things uh, in the language is that we, we support this trailing comma that might seem like a small thing. A trailing comma in lists and matrices and function arguments are the last comma at the end of, of after the last element. 
And it's a small thing, but it makes it much more easy to uh, switch elements when you're working with the AnyScript language, uh, um, add or remove um, the last element in the list without getting syntax errors. Another new, very important feature is like you, our model templates, class templates, they no longer have to be defined, uh, no longer restricted to be outside the, the main scope. Previously, you had to define all your class templates very early in your code before the, the main scope started, but that is no longer the case. Now you can declare your class template and use it right away. This also means that you can include your templates where you actually need them. And also might seem like a bit of a technical thing, but it makes code reuse much simpler. So um, the class templates has been improved. There are further is uh, improvements to the class templates, but I encourage you to, to really look in um, the release notes if you wanna see more. Another uh, new user interface, ah, maybe not user interface, but another new interface thing that you might notice when you install anybody is that it comes with a completely new installer. Um, it's not only much smaller when you download it, but it also supports, um, see, non-admin installs of anybody. So you can install it for just your user and you don't need admin rights. And for many corporate users, that can be a, a huge relief, so they don't need to call IT. Um, when you install, you can also uh, select whether you want to associate any script files with it or not. And that is nice for people who manage many different installations of anybody at the same time. But in general, the installer is just much faster and it supports silent installations. So now let's talk about some core features in Anybody 8. Um, in general, it comes with better performance. That means faster load times, uh, faster model simulation times, and a much more robust FDK solver. The new features, it also has an, a number of advanced features for uh, body modeling, uh, human body modeling. Um, these three here, I'm not gonna talk about so much, I'm just gonna mention them, um, but it's there are some new fatigue and metabolism modeling support uh, in anybody. We have some um, new ways of using or defining inertia for objects based on geometries, for example, STL files. And there is a, a brand new volume kinematic measure that is heavily used in this um, abdominal pressure model. Um, but all of these things here will be saved a little bit to a, on a future webcast that we are planning to do. Um, on the whole thoracic model part. So I'm just mentioning these advanced features here. But I'm, I am gonna talk about uh, another change. Um, and that is the splitting of our recruited forces in anybody. Like recruited forces are really the foundation of uh, a musculoskeletal modeling system. You know, um, all recruited forces in anybody, they used to be modeled as muscles. So like, Muscles could be, for example, real physiological muscles, as you see here on the picture on the left. But we also modeled the ground reaction forces, the recruited ground reaction forces, um, as really strong artificial muscles, you could say. And residual forces, they could be modeled as very weak artificial models. Um, but in new, something new in Anybody 8 is that there's now a distinction between real muscles and artificial muscles. So um, there is a new class called Any Recruited Actuator that we use for all the ground reaction forces, the residual forces, or everything that is not, not real physiological um, muscles. And it has a, a huge benefit that now when you look uh, at variables in the model tree, for example, this maximum muscle activity that you might be interested in, that is not sort of polluted with things that are not really muscles. So um, this split here is implemented in the model repository. Um, so when you use one of the new models, you automatically get this feature. Another thing that is a little bit related to this is um, volume weighted recruitment. It's a new recruitment criterion in anybody, and it solves um, the muscle discretization problem. And I, I better describe a little bit what that is. So if you, um, the muscle discretization problem is, if you imagine you have like a one dimensional problem here where two muscles, they share a load. If these two muscles have the same strength, then the polynomial recruitment criterion, or I guess really any recruitment criterion, it would predict that these two forces sort of have the same um, activation. They, they produce the same force. Um, the recruitment criterion in, in, in this case uh, is like minimization of the muscle activ uh, activation, as you see here. But 
let's imagine that you now take one of those muscles and you split it in, you discretize it into three smaller muscles. Like in total, they have the same strength as the bigger one that they replaced. It's just like a discretization issue. If you then use a polynomial criterion to optimize the, or to predict the muscle forces, then you end up in a situation where the model actually predicts that like the muscle one here has higher activation it produces more force than the three smaller ones that's not a nice property of a recruitment criteria and if you want to make musculoskeletal models where you often discretize muscles mu muscles into many um, smaller elements but there is a solution to this and it was already proposed by Joachim Holper in 2012 who sort of tried to highlight these issues and the solution is to add a weight to your muscle um, to your polynomial criterion and in this case, if you weight your polynomial criterion by muscle volume, then the criterion sort of changes. So you don't get this, this um, discretization problem. Now you can split muscles and you still get the same result. Um, of course, it is a different uh, criterion. And we now support this kind of criterion natively in anybody. Um, inside the settings of the inverse dynamic studies, you, there is this weighting type where you can set to, to different kinds of weights, like um, the constant uh, setting here is, is what we had before, uh, but now you can se select like, um, like a volume setting, which would use the muscle volumes as weight. And you can also set a user-defined uh, weight if you wanted to find this yourself. It's still a little bit experimental, I have to say. Like um, it's in, in the default, model repository that comes with anybody AMR3, it's not all muscles that have an inherent uh, volume built in, like uh, muscles for the uh, trunk, for example, don't. So you can really only use it if you, if you have a model that, for example, have only legs or only arms, but that will change in AMR4 where we have built a new thoracic model. All muscles will have volume. So this, this kind of weighting type will be possible going forward. Yeah. Um, but there are also some things that makes it still experimental. For example, how should these recruited actuators be weighted in, in this? I, I, there are some things we still don't completely know or are sure of how, how we should, should use, but you can also set this uh, weighting type to user-defined if you have an idea of, of, of your own weight. So we're gonna, we're gonna experiment a lot with that going forward. Um, another new feature you might see in Anybody8 is um, improvements to these uh, object pointers. And many classes now accept object pointers as input instead of references. And to understand the difference here, like a reference is almost like a, the object itself. You sort of you sort of make a copy of it, not, not really a copy, but it, it, it's more heavyweight where pointers are much more lightweight. Um, and an example of this is this uh, class that we have to measure the center of mass. Um, before it had to have references to all the parts that it should include as the center of mass measure. Um, you have to have explicit reference, for example, to the arm segments or the leg segments. And, and this could be difficult sometimes because the model can be configured in all kinds of ways and we have to keep track of them and you can't, can't really make references to objects that don't exist. But in Anybody8, we can now simply um, supply it with pointers to the objects we want to include. So, so now we can find all of these uh, segments we want to include with a simple search function. This is an example here at the bottom where we where we use a, a search function to include all segments within the body model. And to support all of these new um, object pointer things, we have a lot of new uh, functions in anybody that works on these pointer arrays. Um, if you have created these pointer arrays, you can also explore them in the uh, model tree. So like a pointer array is expandable in the model tree and you can, you can explore them. So they don't, like they, they have the same benefits as references really. Um, and they're they're easy enough to work with. There is also a new ligament model in anybody eight. Um, yeah, ligaments are like small non-elastic springs that sort of provide a force based on their length, right? Um, and in some models, ligaments are really uh, necessary in order, depending on what you work with, basically. Um, but there is a new ligament class here in anybody that um, that implements sort of. Uh, yeah, a ligament model that is often found in literature. So, so um, previously it would have been a little bit of a hassle to to implement this kind of model yourself. Now it's built in, and it's a it's a ligament model that has a linear region, 
and then a small quadratic toe in uh, around the um, yeah around the slack length. Um, yeah, the new uh, there is also like when you have um, ligaments in your model, you also need to calibrate them often at least. Uh, especially if you scale your models, like you, you, you need to calibrate your ligaments so that they have the right length. Um, and there is some new functionality to make it easier to calibrate models. Uh, previously, you had to calibrate all your ligaments usually at the slack length. So you would place the model in some sort of posture where the ligament was at its slack length, and then you would say, okay, calibrate the ligament here. But now you can you can calibrate your ligaments at any reference strain that you decide. Um, and it just makes it uh, much easier to calibrate some type of ligaments. So this brings me to the end of the sort of core features and updates in Anybody8 that I wanted to talk about. And now we'll go on to talk to maybe, for my personal sake, the more important stuff or the exciting stuff, the, the updates to the model repository. Like there are, um, there are many updates to all the small model examples that we have. Um, but I, I won't go through those. You, you can look in the, the change log and, and see what has updated and what has changed. Um, I, I highly encourage you to do that. Um, but I'm just going to talk about like the major changes to the body model that you will, could expect when you use the new model repository. Um, first of all, there is a new unified trunk model in anybody. And, and we, have, we have worked on this because it's a preparation for the really detailed thoracic model that has come out in, in the next version of the model repository and which is available on GitHub. Um, it, it basically unifies the whole uh, trunk data set. Um, so now, for example, the, the pelvis is considered part of the trunk model. Um, it has a slightly different posture to the old one. Um, and that means, for example, um, a bit more pelvic tilt. Um, another important change here is that the pelvis is now considered yeah, i said that before it's considered part of the trunk model but it also means that if you were where previously if you loaded a model with legs on it would be the pelvis from the leg model that was included by default it's not now unless you actually uh, overwrite that setting it would be the pelvis from the trunk model that per default is used because we can consider the pelvis as part of the whole spine yeah there's also like huge updates to the um, to the main leg model we use in anybody, which is based on the twenty lower extremity model. Like um, so, we have we have based on these uh, updates, we have basically given the twenty lower extremity model a new version number. We now call it two point two. Um, it has like um, an update to the way the shank is positioned in the model, and we have done this because we realized that that there are some um, some drawbacks about how the shank was positioned in the neutral position, probably because of the non-neutral scan of the original cadaver set. So this has sort of been redesigned. Um, basically, it's a uh, realignment of the shank along along its own long axis. And of course, this means that there is a new knee axis in the shank frame and a new ankle axis, uh, joint axis in the shank frame. Much of this work here, I would like to credit to Dr. Enrico De Pieri. Um, who have been the driver behind this. And he has an upcoming, or he's at least working on a publication on improving and validating the TLM2 uh, leg model. Yeah, small uh, picture here in the video. It shows like uh, before and after where you can see that the, um, the gray model is how it looked before and the, uh, the yellow one is the current one. So one of the important things here is that the patella tendon has a much better alignment. Another thing that Enrico has worked on is he's provided new wrapping surfaces for the um, for the, the calf muscles. So it ensures basically that the calf muscles, both soleus and gastrocnemius, has more or less the same uh, moment arm throughout the range of motion. And internally here, we have worked on the ankle joint. Like the whole ankle joint in the TLM model has been redesigned. All the different bones have been realigned uh, in a neutral position and then uh, one of my colleagues have worked on defining new uh, joint axes uh, for the for the ankle, uh, and it's based on the papers that you see here. So if you're interested, just contact us and, and have a chat. Um, all of this is a preparation for some future um, foot modeling that we are working on. Like um, there is um, there is an upcoming. <clears throat> let's see if I can start this video here. 
there is an upcoming uh, improvement to the foot. Like we, we plan to make a foot model with uh, separate toe segments, which will make it easier to do uh, mocap modeling, uh, better market tracking, for example, um, and also a, a very detailed uh, foot model. But it, that is really only for detailed foot research. It's not very usable for, for other things. Um, but all of these things here are a work in progress. This brings us to new, our new model documentation site that is also updated. Um, some highlights, uh, you can go out and check the, the, the change log down here to see everything that has changed. Um, there is also a new section here that has documentation for all these class template tools that are part of the model repository. Um, and finally, the, um, the documentation site, it has like a very important section if you have old models that you want to port to the new model repository. So there is this update models to AMR 3.0 that will help you do this update. Like if you have models based on 7.4, uh, then it will tell you some of the issues that you can run into. So let's imagine, for example, that you just took your models and the model repository for 7.4 and just loaded it with version 8. That will, in almost all cases, work. But what you will see is that you can, or what you can expect to see is you get a lot of deprecation warnings because a lot of things have changed, but it will still work. And it is also possible to silence all these deprecation warnings if you just want to continue work with an old model and an old model repository. But maybe a better version going forward would be to take your old model and then link it with a new body model repository. And in many cases for simple models, that will just work okay. Like uh, you can expect that to work okay. Um, but if you have complex models that really change body models or hook into specific variables, um, then your models might actually need change. You might run into some errors that says, okay, I can't find this variable name or something like that. And in that case, this um, guide for migrating your models is useful. It has like a lot of error messages that you might encounter and then descriptions on how to fix them. Yeah. So in the end here, let me talk a little bit about like, our model development on GitHub. Like uh, this is new, like recently we have made our uh, development uh, repositories public on, on GitHub. So you can follow the model development that is going on. Uh, you just go to github.com slash anybody to find all our repositories. And if you say slash AMMR, you get the current AMMR version. And you can see what happens there. But there is also this new version AMMR 4 that has this new thoracic model the new abdominal pressure model. And this is also probably where you will find the upcoming foot models when they are released. And for the next slides, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what you can find here on GitHub about the new thoracic model. Um, I'm not gonna go into much detail, I'm just gonna show you them. Um, the new thoracic model is a model that is in development and under validation. As I said, it, it's already available so you can find it. Um, there are multiple papers on this underway. Um, and most of it was done by um, one of our new colleagues who did this work doing his PhD. Um, the thoracic model is, a, is different in the sense that like before the whole th th thoracic uh, part was basically one segment. Now it's individual uh, vertebras, 12 vertebras, each have three degrees of freedom. All the... Um, all the ribs are also individual segments and the sternum is split into two segments. It's, um, it's determinate in the sense that like you can put the spine into any position and then the rib cage and sternum will follow. So it's easy enough to control. You can freely define the spine posture um, and it's robust into a quite a big range of motion. Um, but you can imagine like, like when you introduce so many extra degrees of freedom as this uh, thoracic model goes, the model also becomes a little bit slower. So there should be a reason to use it before you sort of just reach for the most complex model. But the model itself is not more difficult to use. And the reason for that is that we have like spinal rhythms for the whole spine. Like every spinal part has a rhythm. And for the lumbar part, for example, for the thoracic part and for the neck part. And then there are also rhythms between those rhythms. We call them links. That sort of tells you how like one part moves with respect to another. And all these rhythms and these links can be enabled and disabled as you need them uh, using 
like script configuration. Rhythms are basically just like numbers that say how much like a certain degree of freedom move with respect to the overall degree of freedom. So if you can imagine here the, the lumbar part, there is some percentage for each of the degree of freedom that sort of say, okay, like this vertebra moves maybe 12% of the whole lumbar uh, flexion. Um, yeah, here's a small video that shows the, uh, the whole spine, um, the spine flexion. So in this case, we're just driving an overall angle between pelvis and the head and the whole spine follows in a sensible way. Yeah, the, the rhythms are basically uh, defined using a new class template tool that makes it very easy to do these rhythms. Um, so you basically, for the class template, you would define which degrees of freedom that you're interested in, and then the coefficients just go in um, as, as coefficients that you define. And this also means that like, if you have your own coefficients, if you wanna overwrite the rhythm that is currently in, in a, defined for the spine, you can just put in your own coefficients and then you have your own rhythm. Um, here's a overview of what all of these coefficients are here. For example, this example is for actual rotation. So there are rhythms for the lumbar, the thoracic, and the, um, the, the neck part. And again, here on the left side of there are these links that says, okay, how much does each section or each rhythm uh, correspond to the other rhythms. For, exa for, for example, here you can you can see that for actual rotation, only 10% of actual rotation happens in the lumbar region. 30, around 30% happens in the thoracic and the cervical region. So um, yeah, this is an explanation of these uh, coefficients. And of course, there's also coefficients for, for all the other uh, degrees of freedom for flexion extension. And for flexion extension, it's a little bit special because here we have different coefficients when you flex the spine to when you extend the spine. Um, and the system also supports that. The new thoracic model has a very detailed uh, muscle configuration and ligaments. For example, there are all the intercostal muscles. We have the diaphragm muscles. We have the oblique muscles. All along the spine, you can enable spinal ligaments if you really need ligaments. Um, and then, of course, there is this new abdominal pressure model where all the abdominal muscles, they provide pressure here to, to support the abdominal pressure, which then transferred up to, to, the, to the lungs and the, the thorax part. Um, but I'm not go, gonna go more into detail to this new model. There will be an upcoming webcast. We haven't decided the date yet completely. Um, so look out for the announcement. The presenters will be um, John Turholm, one of the co-founders of Anybody, and then Hamed, who was who is one of our newest newest colleagues at Anybody, who will um, yeah he he will he will do the presentation together with John. But as I said, you can already try this new model now. Just go to GitHub Anybody slash MMR four beta, and then you can you can check it out. It you you need Anybody eight to use this model. It has some new features or maybe a trial version, of course. Um, yeah, that brings us to the end of uh, of this release webcast. Um, if you have any questions that uh, don't really belong here, then send an email to sales at anybody tech. Christopher will be sure to answer them. Um, yeah, also, if you want a trial version, please send us an email. 